So I, all, I also noticed recently that tensions had um, started to build in the South China Sea with the Philippines and China, the United States um, stoking tensions between South Korea and North Korea. The United States is um, uh, stoking tensions with China and its province of, of Chinese uh, Taipei. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Chinese Taipei is Taiwan. What is your take on this? Okay, so I will address South China Sea and Taiwan first before addressing China and India. Um, so South China Sea, the, what the U.S. media is not telling you, um, right? Right now, it's a it's a maritime dispute. It's it's basically a dispute about uh, EEZ, exclusive economic zones of, between the Philippines and China in South China Sea, and um, when, when, y, y, so U.S. do have, you, Blinken went to the Philippines and he said the U.S. have an ironclad commitment to U.S.-Philippine mutual defense treaty. And he claims, the State Department now claims that U.S.-Philippine defense treaty covers South China Sea. We stand with the Philippines uh, and stand by our ironclad defense commitments, including under the mutual defense treaty, Article 4 extends to arm attacks on the Filipino armed forces, public vessels, aircraft, including those of its Coast Guard, anywhere in the South China Sea. Which is itself is a provocation because uh, when the U.S. and Philippines signed the defense treaty in 1951, when the Philippines just became independent, it has a very clear delineation of what Philippine is. It's a, it's a, it defined the Filipino territory as the one that U.S. inherited from Spain when it defeated Spain in the, the, the Spanish-American War. And that did not include um, the South China Sea. And so now, now U.S. is trying to expand that definition to cover the dispute in the South China Sea, of course, to come from China. Now, what U.S. mainstream media is not telling you, but which has actually been reported in the Philippines, is that... China, so, so the, the, the current hotspot in the South China Sea is this uh, second, called the Second Thomas Shell um, in English. It's this set of reefs that would be submerged under the high tide. Um, so the, 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 the thing with reefs is under the UN uh, uh, law of the sea, Unicode, no, no countries can claim reef as a, like a submit submissible features as like territory, but they can be included in their um, a, a special economic zones. And what happened was there was that the dispute dates back to before the Philippines was founded because after World War II, um, the, uh, the Republic of China back then, they drew a 11 dash line around uh, South China Sea and they sent the, the, the the U.S. supply warship to claim enforcer claims. This at this time when Chiang Kai Shek was U.S. proxy, so U.S. was perfectly fine with that. U.S. was perfectly fine with Republic of China claiming all the South China Sea features um, after the Japanese surrender. And but then the Chinese Civil War happened, and during the China, Chinese Civil War, when U.S. saw that communists was winning, so they decided to exclude China, the, both side of China, both the communist side and the KMT side for attending the Treaty of San Francisco in 1951 to resolve all the claims dating from the Japanese surrender. Um, so the exclusive, ex explicitly excluded China and Korea, because Korea was also in the, in the, in the midst of the Korean War. So, all the, so what, as a result, Japan have gave up all its claim on all its territory occupied during the war, and the ownership was not formally transferred to China. And then, then as we know, the, the Chinese Civil War happened. So when, when the KMT, when the Nationalist Army was losing all the Chinese coast and including Highland Island, they pulled out all their garrisons from around Ch South China Sea and, and, and retreated to Taiwan. And then in 1950, in, in, in 1970s, in 1970s, is when Philippines first initially put the claim uh, to the South China Sea. So this happened well after 
the Filipino claim to the South China Sea happened well after the signing of 1951 U.S. Philippines uh, uh, Defense Treaty, right? And so this is a new claim, and and this has resulted in the dispute between China and the Philippines around the Second Thomas Shelf. So to enforce its claim, when when China start to build up bases on these islands in, in South China Sea, the Philippines decide to enforce its claim by run a World War II era U.S. Navy ship that inherited from the United States, the Sierra Madre, by running the ground as uh, Second Thomas Shaw to stick its claim. So in response, China has sent Coast Guard to surround that, um, to surround that reef uh, but the Philippines stuck a, a dozen marine on the on the sh stranded ship Sierra Madre, and they will send regular supply ships to supply their marines. So what China is doing is they they send Coast Guard to surround the shawl to prevent um, the Filipino supply ship from reaching. But you know it, this is more like for a show because the the marine the Filipino marines are still there; they're still getting uh, resupply. So China recently actually made an offer to the Philippines and they said, look, we are, we, let's agree to a deal where we will allow the regular shipment from Filipino supply ship to its Marines stationed on Sierra Madre, the stranded ship on, on the second Thomas Shaw. But in return, the Philippines agree not to, uh, send in uh, buildings materials. So China don't want the Philippines to build on the island. Um, they're okay to keep the status quo. Um, but this is not what the U.S. has in plan because U.S. want to use this opportunity to stir up tensions, which would justify the U.S. military's return to the Philippines. Because let's remember that the U.S. military wasn't popular for their bases in the Philippines, because U.S. military bases always brings crime and prostitution. And this is one of the reasons U.S. military got kicked out of the Supic Naval Base and Clark Air Base of the Philippines in the 1990s. Um, because at that time, the, the, the Filipino parliament says, OK, you, you, this is a big cost. We are bearing a big burden. If you want to stay, you have to pay more money. And U.S. doesn't want to pay, so 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 they got kicked out. And but now U.S. want to come back to come from China, and they need an excuse. And the excuse they need is South China Sea tension. And they got their man in Manila, Mr. Bong Bong Marcos, because Bong Bong Marcos is the son of Ferdinand Marcos, the former dictator of the Philippines. <laughs> and and, and Bong Bong Marcos is famous for corruption and and a cruel billions of dollars that he uh you know uh, from his uh, uh corrupt uh, from his, his 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 corruption uh during the time he ran the filipino government so this billions of dollars are stashed in the offshore account that's uh that has been froze by the u.s government after ferdinand marcos was overthrown so so this is where U.S. government come in and can offer a deal that uh, that Bongo Marcos could not refuse. It's like, okay, you want your money? You want your dad's money? We have access to your dad's money. <laughs> and so this is where you know you see the big 180 turns of the Philippines after Duterte presidency, because during Duterte, Duterte's policy is pivoting away from U.S. toward China and Russia. But after Duterte was uh, <laughs> because Duterte can only serve two terms. And and Bamba Marcos was like, okay, okay, I'm going to uphold your policy. Bamba Marcos actually went to China after he became the president. But then then U.S., you know, made him a deal he couldn't refuse, offer he couldn't refuse. So now Philippine is like the cat's paw of the United States mm -hmm. to come from China. Um, and they already signed an agreement with Philippines to allow nine Filipino base, military bases to be used by the U.S. military, and 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 they are stationed either along South China Sea or on the north in the northern Philippines facing Taiwan. But the thing is, the northernmost Filipino province facing Taiwan, the governor has said, "I don't want U.S. bases here. Chinese are coming here to offering to build us ports 
<laughs> they're offering economic development. You are just offering military bases. You know, I rather have economic development and export goods to China. Dapat ang EDCA ay i-review o kaya naman ay abolish na dahil hindi naman ito tugon sa kahirapan, sa krisis ng mga sa krisis ng Pilipinas. I've always been against foreign military forces in the country. There are no winners in war. Manuel Mamba is the governor of Cagayan province, which is just 250 miles from Taiwan. Even though he was against the EDCA expansion, his province will still see more U.S. troops. What's the worst case scenario? And when military equipment will be placed in my province, that would be a magnet if and when war would erupt. What is your province's relationship to China? We never had problems with them. And in every major city and major town here, we have Chinese communities. They have always been part of us too. Couldn't the presence of the U.S. military be an economic boon to your province? Well, there's no denying. It could. But uh, I see a bigger boon with uh, reconnecting with uh, the market itself. China had this unprecedented growth in the economy in the last 40 years. We have never been part of it, despite the fact that we're nearest to them. Our opportunities are not with us. Food is sometimes scarce. I'm also trying to seek out what's the best for our, uh, for our country. How do you respond to the voices that say President Marcos invited the U.S. military here and there's a lot to be gained from the United States like safety? That's a total lie. That's a complete lie. I mean, the U.S. has always been here, has been here since 1901. If you want to help us get out of our territory, of our own land, of our own seas, of our own women, get out of our country, my goodness, you're not helping us at all. But he was overruled. The, the regional governor was democratically elected in his region, was overruled because, you know, U.S. got to do what he got to do to, to, to start trouble in Taiwan. So this is this is the, the situation in the Philippines. So, so now we see all these uh, we have all these footages shot from the Filipino ships because they got all the journalists from U.S., from the Philippines. And they, they go there to stir up the tension and they can capture it. And then they broadcast on, on uh, CNN and, and Wall Street Journal and say, look at those aggressive Chinese. You know, look at those <laughs> aggressive Chinese. Now, 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 Tony Blinken said, OK, we offer ironclad commitment to the U.S.-Filipino Mutual Defense Treaty and recover South China Sea. OK, what does that mean? So U.S. have three options, right? Right now. What we're talking about is a water cannon fight between the Chinese Coast Guard and, and the Filipino supply ship, right? We're not talking about military arm attack here. So U.S. have three options. U.S. can either A, send the U.S. Coast Guard to send to second Thomas Shaw. So we, people can Google. There's actually articles in U.S. media talking about how U.S. Coast Guard can play a role containing <laughs> China in South China Sea. So A, they can send U.S. Coast Guard to, to engage in water cannon fights against the Chinese Coast Guard. But guess what? The Chinese Coast Guard ships are much, much bigger yes. than anything U.S. Coast Guard have in their stock. And so if U.S. Coast, yes, if the U.S. Coast Guard is going to go go there and engage Chinese Coast Guard in water cannon fights, guess what? They're going to get their ass kicked. So that's option number one. <laughs> option number two. Option number two, the U.S. can send its navy and, and basically bring a gun to the water fight, right? Like the U.S. can 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 send its navy and and claim this is you know somehow they're defending the Philippines, but that means World War Three, you know, if the moment the U.S. Navy launch a missile against Chinese Coast Guard, that's an act of war. So I mean, and and we know that could possibly end in nuclear exchange. So so that's option number two, World War Three. Option number, th not option number three, is to pub to flood the news media with the aggressive Chinese behavior in the South China Sea. China is bad. We stand behind Philippines, and then, uh, then use this opportunity to pivot U.S. military asset to the Philippines to get the access to the Filipino bases, uh, secure the base rights, and but actually doing nothing to help the Filipino advance their claim because, because they're not going to get involved. They're just going to use this opportunity as an excuse for the U.S. military buildup in the Philippines.
So guess what? I think the number three is the most likely scenario. And I think that's what U.S. is going with. And, 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 and if, unfortunately, a lot of the more patriotic Filipinos are kind of being led by the nose. They think the U.S. is actually helping them. U.S. is not going to get in the, there in that water fight. They're just going to use this opportunity to, to, to get back to the Philippines, build up their, their bases. And, 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 and you know, that's it's, as part of their military posture to contain China. How that can help Philippines, I, I, you know, I don't see that happening. They're not going to get directly involved in a military confrontation that could start World War III. So that's yeah. South China's 